Thank you everyone for joining us today for our product labeling webcast. During this presentation, I would like to discuss what product labeling is, why it's important to food processing, and how we can improve it by using software. Before we get going, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dustin. I've been working with software solutions in food processing at Morel for over 10 years. Keeping a food processing facility running can be a challenge for anyone. There are many moving parts involved. Can you relate to our friend here in this picture trying to juggle all of the KPIs? I want to talk today about one challenge in particular, product labeling. There are many reasons for needing to mark or identify products, as you can see here. At the end of the day, we need to guarantee that the product gets through the facility and satisfies regulations. We need to ensure that the product being sold goes to the correct destination. It's also important that the customer can easily identify what the product is. There are many approaches when it comes to labeling products, all of which have their pros and cons. Some examples of this could be buying pre-printed labels from a vendor, writing on the box with a pen, or even pre-printing the boxes themselves. Who is responsible for your labeling? So what are the challenges of this traditional approach? I want to answer this question with another question. If generating a label is a separate process from your production, then how confident are you that you have the correct labels on the boxes? To take this a step further, what happens if the label is incorrect, causing the wrong product to be sent to a customer, which then needs to be replaced? What if they end up canceling the production contract as a result of this mistake? There are even customers who may reject a shipment because the label isn't up to the specification they demand. Or it could be rejected or held up in customs because the regulatory requirements for the label weren't met. How quickly can your business react to meet new requirements from regulations, customers, or even your own marketing department? What if we made a simple change to the production process by placing the product on a scale and then selecting the SKU and lot number on a touchscreen? Then we could register the product into the system with a push of a button to generate the label and then apply the label to the box. With this scenario, we are very confident that the right label is on the right box. Let's take that scenario a step further by managing the product settings and label definition centrally. We can then distribute the appropriate settings to the different departments. This helps us maintain quality and also reduce mistakes. Managing printers is also a breeze. All of the settings are stored in the system so you can deploy new units or replace existing ones quickly and easily. If your organization is even larger and spans multiple facilities, we offer a master data management system which allows you to design your labels and product settings at headquarters and distribute them to the facilities. This gives you a very fine control over the operations. Don't take our word for it. Let's hear what some of Morel's customers say about labeling with software. My name is Adam Hazeldine. I'm the general manager of plant operations here at Hazeldine's Chicken Farm. Uh, we make over 550 different SKUs on site, um, uh, numerous different products from uh, whole birds through to uh, boned out portions, tray packing, and a little bit of value add as well. Uh, we were using a program uh, where we pre-printed all of our labels uh, in groups of probably 100 or 200 rolls per, per roll. Uh, this, the issues with this uh, were products or labels were actually being placed on incorrect products when we were doing product changeover. Key benefits to using the online method is the adaptability between changing your products uh, whilst we're in production. 
Uh, we only print one label at a time, which enables the staff to actually print those labels and place them on the product as they're being made, uh, which limits our risk to sending incorrect information to our customers. Uh, the label designer in Innova is the tool made to create the labels. You decide what product will have what label uh, and you have like everything stored in the database is basically usable on the label. All, all kinds of information you want to use is at your disposal. So uh, it's a powerful tool. Um. I'm uh, searching for the right label. I know it is, it is uh, that one. And then I put it on the scale, uh, watch the weight, and it comes out. Put it on the meat and into the bucket. Innova food processing software helps me keep track of labels in a way that I don't have to keep track of every single item produced. I can have templates for each product form and the way it works with Innova is that it would grab all the information in a table and produce individual labels for each product. So we go from 200 labels to using 10 templates, which are way easier to keep track of. With Innova, I can take care of an item list of 200 products and have 10 templates to cover all of those labels. The software keeps a digital record for each label printed. This information can be used to verify the accuracy of the labels. There is also the capability of auditing this if required. I would like to now introduce you to Michael Parrish. He's a product manager here at Morel, and he is responsible for labeling solutions, end of line solutions, and food safety solutions. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah, audits are really important in food manufacturing, especially surrounding our labeling because unfortunately, the most common reason for a recall are labeling mistakes. The best attack against a recall is a very proficient audit plan. So with the software, you're not only designing the label, you're releasing it to the equipment where it's being applied and we're getting the records of all of what's happened with that label you're getting a lot of traceability information to use as your audit material, or, or the proof that you are in compliance of your procedure and that all of that data is correct and it's on the right thing at the right time. Now, what's pretty salient today is just the pandemic situation going on and we're very much concerned about the safety of our employees and our practices. So software is a great opportunity to do this even in a remote or safe fashion. Yes, you'll still need some hands on the floor to perform that audit, but the bulk and majority of that information can be found within the software itself. So that's a pretty powerful thing, not only today, but even looking at one site versus a lot of different sites and taking that MDM structure to perform your audit practices is Dustin mentioned a bit earlier. So having this software as that single source of truth and giving these people responsible for the labeling practices an avenue to find it quickly, now you're working at the bottom line and really tacking what those recall processes are. Something you should be asking is how easy is it to adapt to changes? All of the product settings are stored in the central database and we use the label format to pull any settings which are relevant to the current process. We have a drag and drop interface that allows you to quickly change label formats and send them to production. So when there are changes to the regulations or label requirements, you have all the tools necessary to quickly adapt. As a result of having the label layout saved centrally with the product settings, we can reuse the layouts for multiple products and bring in any relevant information as required. In our example here, we can see how we can adjust the Chinese text for each product. Here are two examples of different products with the same layout printed on demand with different text descriptions. This could be important when exporting products to China. 
We can also store customer information in the system and pull that in automatically as products are labeled. There's no need to manage label designs for individual customers. In this example, we have multiple sales orders set up for cod loins. One is for big box store and the other is for Patagonian Paradise. As we produce the labels, the correct customer information is automatically pulled in. This could be the customer's name, the name of the order, the purchase order information, address, phone number, etc. Before we get into more practical examples of software label design, let's take a short break to see some equipment this applies to. All of the equipment in this video is supported by our label design software. Combining hardware and software can really have an impact on the process. Let's explore that in the question and answer session if you have further questions. Earlier, we talked briefly about adapting to customer change. Let's look at a practical example of a customer asking you to add a UPCA barcode to the label. Where do we start? First, let's load up our product settings and make sure we have the information feeding the barcode stored for each product. Now that we have our barcode data set in the system, we can then open our label designer. After your label design is loaded, navigate down to the barcode section and expand linear barcodes. Now find UPCA in the list. Drag UPCA into your label layout. You'll notice that the information driving the barcode is displayed as data not set. No problem. We have saved the data for our barcode field in our product settings. Next, we find the barcode field in our product macros. Now we hold the control key and we drag the barcode field into our new UPCA barcode. You can see that the data not set message is gone and the barcode data has been populated. Next, we use our handy label preview feature to see how the barcode will look without having to get suited up to go out into the production area. Let us summarize. We had a customer request to add a barcode. First, we added the barcode's value to the product settings. Next, we used the drag and drop interface to add a UPCA barcode and also populate the data for that barcode. Finally, we previewed our work. How easy is this for you to do in your current system? We have now explored using a software solution for labeling. What other added benefits can we realize by doing this? First, it allows us to gain visibility over our production numbers to help us identify problems and make meaningful predictions in the now, instead of after production is done for the day or the week.
Second, we can use the weight limits on the scale, so if the box weight is not in compliance, the operator must fix the weight before a label is generated. This reduces our giveaway, also known as overpack. Third, by adding serialized barcodes to our labels, we can control other processes, such as palletizing, dispatch, and reprints. We support all major types of thermal label printers. We even have support for some more automated labeling systems, as you got a taste of in the video we watched earlier. This concludes our presentation on labeling. Before we move on to the question and answer portion of the session, we would like to invite you back to our next webcast, which will cover the ins and outs of dispatch. Thank you all for joining us here today. We will start our question and answer session shortly. Okay, let's get started with our question and answer session. Before we get going, I'd like to just point out the, the how this works. So there's this chat window. You can type questions in, and then uh, we, you can also like them if you think it's a good question, if someone else posted it. And then that will give us an opportunity on where to start with the questions. And while you're getting going on that, let me introduce our specialists. We have from Illinois, we got Louis Bardick. He's been with working with uh, Morel for 20 years now, focusing on IT manufacturing software solutions. And he currently heads up the software service group in North America. Next from Kansas, we have Michael Parrish. He's been working with Morel for the past three years. He's a product manager for the software, focusing on quality assurance, logistics, and cross industry software solutions for manufacturing. And last but not least, we have Nick Saharan. He's coming at us from Washington. He's uh, the global leader for the software sales team at Morel. He leads a team driven toward helping customers worldwide improve their manufacturing efficiency with software. Okay, let's get into some questions. Okay, how about this, this one here for Nick? How easy is it to manage printers using ANOVA? Well, uh, good question. It's quite easy um, using ANOVA for the um, uh, for the printer. So basically, device and media settings are all stored uh, in the database. So deploying new unit is uh, as easy as setting an IP address and basically, you know, plugging the uh, uh, plugging the device in. Good. Thanks a lot. So let's, uh, let's get to another question. So let's say for Michael, if you'd be so kind, what do I do if I don't have someone to manage my labels? Yeah, that, that's a good question, Dustin. So it would be in our view, kind of the best case to have someone to be able to do that. So we would love to help you find the right person and get them trained up. Uh, we find the best success of having someone in a company really delegated to just focusing on that, but there are plenty of other tasks that those people can do, but it's the best practice in our, our viewpoint. Okay, good. Here we have another question. It, uh, it is, how can I print automatically two labels without the operator needing to reprint the label? I think I can handle that one. In your, your layout settings, you can change the number of copies to print to two. So you can just go in there and, and then send the, the change to production and uh, then you'll get two every time you print it. It's pretty common when you get to pallet labels, but it also works for uh, box labels and other ones too. Okay. And if you, uh, you need some assistance with that, we'll reach out to you and make sure that uh, we can get that question answered. Okay, how about uh, another question? Does your software support the GS1 standards? I think I can handle that one. And uh, the answer is yes. The application identifiers are even built right into the, the software. So you can select them from a drop down list with the definitions and then assign the appropriate data to that. And other than that, it's just like any other barcode. Okay, Let's see if we have something new here. Uh, 
How about this one for Louis? Are all languages supported and is the change easy? Yes, uh, it, it all the label designer itself. First of all, good question. The label designer itself has support for a variety of language types. Uh, so for the user interface itself, we support a variety of languages uh, and that is tied back to the actual user and their culture setting. Now for the label design itself, it, we do have the capability to store uh, translated text that can be driven through an actual through the actual product setting itself or it can be driven through a, a customer order. Here's a, another question for uh, how about Louie, you take this one. Can label designer handle approval workflows? Uh, yes, uh, Innova it's set up in a way through different levels of user accesses. So you can have your design uh, say elements handled through particular users. You can have then a workflow set up within Innova from from say product settings to user design through to distributing the label to a, a repository out on the factory floor. All that's uh, all that all those different steps can be managed through the user uh, settings as well as workflows and approval processes that are within Innova to allow you to move to the next uh, say stage of that label. And all that stuff is logged into uh, Innova. Good. Yes, and I'd like to add something to that. The the audit tracking is available for a lot of stuff, not just the labels, and it shows you uh, who made the changes and what it was originally and what it changed to, so you can get a good history of all that stuff. Okay, next question. This one, how about for Nick? If I have a recall, how can I quickly verify what was printed on the package? Mm, that's a good question again. Well, basically with the uh, label preview feature within Innova, uh, you can look up the unit number in the system and uh, view uh, what label was printed. So it's, uh, it's quite straightforward. Good, thanks for that. And we have another question here. How about Michael, can you take this one? What other Innova software modules interact with the label designer? Yeah, good question. So it's interesting because the label designer is kind of a standalone product in some cases, but in reality, labels are intertwined in practically everything from receiving to dispatch, right? So the module itself uh, interacts with all the other modules in one way or another. Uh, and supports a variety of devices in that way too. So it really just depends on what the application is needed. Okay, good, thanks a lot. Yeah. Here we have another question. How about, what is the process for a lot changeover in your system? I think I can answer that. There's a couple different approaches to this. The first one could be as simple as going to the management screen and selecting from a drop-down list the, from the available lots. And we also have some more advanced features. So if you want to set up a rule that automatically changes your lot, we can do that. For instance, if every time there's a shift change, we could do that automatically. And uh, thirdly, we can also forward them from other parts of the facility. And that ties in directly with the traceability component. Okay, Let's see if we have any new questions coming in. Okay, Michael, how about you take this one? When using software for labels with pricing, what is the certified secure environment? Yeah, that's that's a good question and often is kind of debated. So in reality, uh, say take a way price labeler from Morel, uh, the certified system is actually on that piece of equipment itself. So uh, the pricing algorithm, for instance, uh, the legislate legislation rules around the label format uh, and the weight records themselves are part of that certified system. Our software, uh, the Innova label designer and else, uh, we're just getting those records and we're also providing the area for those things to be applied. Um, other things like scales uh, and processes can also be certified just through say weights and measures, uh, but that's kind of a different story. So. We aren't that certified system, the equipment itself is. Good. Okay, I think that just about covers all of our questions. 
if there's something we missed, we'll be sure to follow up with you and very shortly so we can uh, make sure those get answered. And uh, one last thing before we close this session, thanks everyone for joining and stay tuned for our next webcast, which will be covering the ins and outs of dispatch.